Hey guys, this is Apple Gamer 24 7 I'm here to give you guys today a video on iPad apps for back to school. I know in the next couple of weeks or even in the next month, uh, people are going to start going back to school starting college for the first time. And I've been getting a lot of questions lately, um, not on YouTube, but just uh, people that know me in general want to know uh, if a tablet is good for going back to school. Is getting a tablet worth it or should I just stick with using a laptop? And what I traditionally recommend to people is that they should stick with both. Um, if you use a laptop for anything that's basically longer that you need a uh, physical keyboard to, but if you can survive um, college or high school or every grade you're going in on a tablet, I recommend you do it because number one, it offers a, a better immersive experience and the touch screen, in my opinion, is a lot better to type on than a physical keyboard, in my opinion. Uh, some people might disagree with me on that, but I really, really like the keyboard on an iOS device, especially the iPad. I love typing on it, so it's just one of the things I recommend um, when I'm recommending tablets to people. And plus, they're lighter. It's a, it's, uh, it takes way off your back when you're carrying around these things in your backpack. So anyway, um, I'm going to go through a list of uh, apps that I personally put together myself. I've been using these apps in this exact order. I would say for the last maybe four years I just want to go through the apps I use and maybe share my workflow ideas um, and my workflow with you guys so you guys can take it with you to work, school, whatever uh, you want to do. This is how I basically use my iOS devices together to achieve some success basically. So anyway, uh, going on with the built-in apps, I have my list broken down into two parts. I have built-in apps and I have third-party apps. Pretty simple, right? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the built-in apps first. So starting off with the first built-in app I have here is the calendar app. Now since I just got out of school on uh, this past Monday, uh, the I believe it was the 12th, uh, August 12th, but this could be later by the time we're watching this video. It could be a year from now. But basically, I don't have any events scheduled, but if I want to add an assignment to something, all I do is I hit the plus button down at the bottom and I make a new event. I label the assignment what it is. I put a star and end point on it. And for anything, if it's like a quiz or something, I usually put any, you know, things to say for names of uh, files that I uh, need to look at in the note section to um, help you remember what I need to study. Or when I'm done with the assignment, I usually put in all caps, done, so I know it's done. So it's just an easy way to do it. Now, I know if you're on a Mac, I'm not sure if you can do this on the iPad, but I know if you're on a Mac or you use iCloud.com, you can color code these. I'm not sure if you can do it on the iPad itself, but you can do it via iCloud.com and also uh, count the calendar app for the Mac. So that's another thing to keep in mind as well. And it's also um, good in a hurry because you can make a change because the calendar app syncs with iCloud. You can make a change on one device and it goes across all your other devices. So if I were to make a change on my iPhone uh, just in the hallway and then I come back to my iPad, the change is already there. So that's one thing to keep in mind um, when picking an app. Uh, try to see if it uses iCloud because uh, trust me, you're gonna like, you're gonna love iCloud um, once you start using it in a situation like this. So that is the built-in uh, calendar app. Uh, the second and final built-in app out here is the Notes app. Now the reason I use the Notes app compared to other note-taking apps is because it's just, there's no login scheme. I don't really have a reason to use it because just the fact that I like it a lot better. I've been using the Notes app on my iPhone maybe before I got the iPad. So I think that's because of the reason. But I just like how the way it looks. I like having a glance at my notes over here. Um, I'm not really, I don't really care for the paper and the screwmorphic design. I really prefer it in this case, but I'm not really getting too picky in that. But I kind of like it because it's quick. If you need to write something down quick, the Notes app is right here and there's no... Uh, login screen or any uh, login information you can just um, type and not have to worry about um, logging in anything as my voice starts to die. So anyway, uh, that's basically the uh, notes app. As you can see, I have a lot of notes here for different classes. Um, here's one for uh, a, a class I just took. As you can see, these are just general things I just put down and then I use them to study later. So it's just simple and easy, something quick if you need a quick sheet of paper. Um, so that's the end of the third party apps, uh, not the third party, the built in apps. Now I'm going to start uh, with the third party ones. Uh, the first th third party app is iBooks or any general ebook reader for the iPad, such as the Nook app or the Amazon Kindle app. I believe uh, Google also has one. But basically, the reason I recommend an ebook reader uh, like Amazon or iBooks is because of PDFs. Uh, you can use a PDF like this right here. This is a curriculum right here uh, for Windows 7. And you can zoom in on things, uh, you can uh, stand, put this in portrait mode, and it's just easy to read PDFs uh, in color and um, not worry about distortion because I know a lot of uh, PDF viewers on the iPad, they don't offer 
Um, sometimes the pinch and zoom feature, I know some of you them don't offer that. So that's one thing I like about the iBooks app and a few other ones that allows you to pinch and zoom. And another thing that I like about the iBooks app is the uh, quick scroll. Um, you can quick scroll down here and you can also email it to a friend and you also have a few bookmarking um, things. So that's just one thing I like about the iBooks app. But any particular uh, ebook reading app in general can basically help you out in this case. And if you go back to the library, you can see... Um, I have a few different things, plus you can also have your uh, textbooks on here too with iBooks textbooks um, if your school supports that, like this Ubuntu book that I have right here that I was using uh, last year. So that's just a um, little thing to keep in mind when picking ebook reader. Um, if it supports your textbooks, great, use it. If it doesn't, don't bother, just use it as a PDF viewer. So um, it's just one thing I recommend. The second app I recommend is I really can't show this one on the camera because in the previous take, uh, it asked me to reset my password. So I'm not going to really show it to you, but it's Evernote. It's just a really, really nice uh, note-taking app. It syncs between all your devices via its own servers. Um, I use that for another class. I kind of keep um, some stuff separate from some from other classes, so I use that. And I like to use that for it because it has bullet points and you can highlight stuff in that. I really like that app for just doing um, more detailed notes. But if I'm just doing something quickly, uh, like I said before, definitely check out the built-in notes app. So Evernote, give it a try. And if you don't like it, it's free. So just give it a shot if you really are interested or curious about it. Now the next one I have here is um, called Genius Scan, and I mainly I uh, found this one um, this a couple months ago actually. Uh, somebody told me about it, and basically what it does is it allows you to take a picture of a document and turn it into a PDF. Basically, scan it in as you were a scanner. So if you have somebody or teacher, or professor, or whatever has paper notes but they don't like doing an electronic copy like you make your own using this app i prefer if you have it on an iphone um but basically a scanning app there's a ton of them i prefer genius scan because it's free i believe you can pay 2.99 um for the pro version which allows you to export in a variety of formats and a bunch of other places such as google drive so if you're interested in doing that i have the pro version because of the google drive feature but i have to say it is totally worth it if you guys are looking for a scanning app um, the next one is actually pretty simple. It's the YouTube app. I mainly use that to find how-to videos to, have, to look up how-to things. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the next one I have here is Pages, Apple's iWork uh, Suite Pages. Now, I mainly use Pages as a word processor. I mainly majority type all my papers and type homework assignments out on this because it's so easy. Um, it syncs with iCloud. That's basically my whole thing for this video is going to be iCloud. That's pretty much the only reason I use that. And it gives me the same um, things I would use on Word and if you uh, go back to the documents you can email this directly from the app in the Word document pages or PDF form. So pretty much how um, what format you want uh, pages is going to work with it and it syncs with iCloud which is a good thing and plus you can have a ton of documents uh, depending on your size and you can make folders as you can see uh, right there. So this is an R app that I use. This is on uh, $9.99 in the App Store if you guys are interested. Uh, the next one is Keynote. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have anything in here because I haven't used it in a while. But basically, this is how you view PowerPoints on an iPad. It's really easy. All the transition works from PowerPoint or Keynote right on here. So there's no reason to convert anything. Sometimes it will convert your text to, to a different font. But to me, that doesn't really matter. It's more of the content. So that's the uh, PowerPoint viewer that I use is Keynote. That's also $9.99. And you can create PowerPoints right here on your iPad. So that's also uh, really cool too. So heading back home. Uh, the next one I don't have on here because I don't really use it. It's numbers. It's basically Apple's Excel. Uh, you can basically go on the App Store and look at numbers to see if you need it. But I have all three uh, keynote uh, uh, pages and numbers just in case I need all of them. But uh, just because it's 30 bucks, um, it's worth it. The, the whole suite is worth it. But I don't use numbers, so I don't have it on here. So definitely check that out in the App Store screenshots. And the next one on here is GraphCalc HD. Uh, basically what this is, it's a big graphing calculator for your iPad. You can put in equations, um, different numbers, or just use it as a bigger calculator. Uh, for some math classes that I took, uh, they require special like $150 to $200 graphing calculators. And with this, I can get that and more with a 99 cent app, basically. So basically what I can do is I can input equations and, you know, do cosine, tangent, and there's other functions you can do right here using the built-in functions. Um, what else? You can get the, uh, you can find, you can do your X and Y values uh, using this one right here. Um, you can also designate them uh, color code so you can only see that line and you can also uh, turn lines off. And on, you can also get the 
table of values are here so that's also really cool to see uh you can also edit those on the fly uh, this app has really been updated since the last time i used it which is about a year or two years ago now but then you also got some other things this is a really advanced calculator and it saves you guys a lot of money if you're looking for a uh, expensive graphing calculator definitely give this app a try it's 99 cent it might be cheaper or it might be free uh, depending on how you look in the app store and the last one that I have on here is uh, Notability. Uh, that app recently got updated today. So let me just um, find it for you guys right there. Let me go back. Um, so this app just got updated today. Basically what this allows you to do is I like to take those PDFs that I scanned in um, Genius Scan and just put them in here because I can actually um, write on them and draw on them and say if I want to you know, draw on something right here, I'm going to circle this. You know, I can do that. You know, I can create a text box you know, right here. Create you know, text box right on this, you know, color whatever I want. So, you know, I can highlight, erase. You know, basically if I want to write on a PDF and somebody gives me a worksheet, I want to put it on my iPad because I don't want it to write too well. I can just scan, I can throw um, all these scans I do from Genius Scan uh, right to here and I can write on them just like it were handed to me uh, on physical paper. So anyway guys, I know this video was long. I know this had a lot of information in it, but if you guys have any questions about any of the apps I use and how I use them, just leave them down below. Also, Android users, if you have certain Android tablet apps or Android phone apps uh, that you use in school to help you, uh, if you want to leave those down below, um, I'll have all these links to where you can get these apps in the app store down in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video.